guys, Eric here from Expedition Electric, and today we're going to take the Swagtron Swag Cycle EB5 and do some repairs to it. The parents that I bought it from said their kids were taking it full send over some, some big jumps, and as a result, we have a, a flat back tire. Neither the front or the rear brakes are working, and they said that it shorts out once in a while. So we're going to see what we can do to take this thing and uh, make it functioning again. So as always, when we get started, I like to take a few photos, you know, remembering how everything on the bike looks so that when we put it back together, everything goes how it should. I'm going to use this adjustable wrench here to remove the back tire. So I'm taking note here, kickstand. then washer, then bolt. I'm just going to simply unhook the brake here. So there we go, now the brake is unhooked. So now I'm looking at the other side of the tire here and I need to, I think, remove this plastic cap to get to the bolt, the nut. There we go. So now this needs to loosen up. And then I'm looking here, this is like their the version of the torque arm here, I guess. So I need to take off this screw, this bolt here. Okay, so I got the wheel that's gonna come off this way. Um, but I also am going to try to remove the chain here. So I went ahead and unplugged this right here so I didn't pull on the cord anymore. And then I'm going to also try to figure out if, if I can remove this chain. So I was able to move the chain there. So I've got a bunch more slack on the chain now. So we got a slack chain here. I'm gonna remove it, because I think it's necessary in order to get this back wheel off. There we go. Woo! So this is what it requires to fix a tube or replace the tube on this bike. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is remove this rubber uh, tread from the 36 volt, 250 watt, Swagtron Swag Cycle. Using the tire levers here to increase the leverage to remove this tread. Okay. So we got one side out there. So I'm able to get this tube out just by removing one side of the tire tread. And we're going to check it out. And here it is. So what we're going to have to do is buy a new tube because I don't think there's any way that we can really try to patch this. So I find the size here 14 by 2.125 and I'm just going to type that into Amazon and get a new tire tube. Okay, so the new tire tubes have arrived from Amazon and we're going to go ahead and put those inside the tire, one of them. So these actually came with a couple tire levers, which is great. So to get the tube inside the tread, I'm gonna remove the valve cap here and set that aside so I don't lose it. And then find where the valve goes into the rim, where the hole is, and that's where I'm going to start. So you see I got a flat surface here to work on, table, which made it a little bit easier to remove the, tr the tread, but I've really got it fully removed and I've inserted the valve here. I'm going to work the tube around. I don't know if you can get the tube in without really fully taking off both sides of the rubber tread. This is a tight fit. I just watched the video on uh, that Swagtron put out on how to change a tire tube on their on their EB5 bike and it wasn't much help. <laughs> But 
But as you can see here, it's, I mean, I've really got to work this tube in here. So if you've never done this before, you know, it can be a little bit tricky. It can take some time. You know, the key is to, to not force it and to sort of work your way around the tube. Um, see, I got a little part here still sticking out. So I'm just going to slowly, you know, if it gets stuck on one side, you could flip it to the other side and see if you can do it from there. You can flip it around here. You can go from this side or this side. So now the tube really is fully in and I'm going to carefully start working the rubber tread back into the rim. So I'm going to start near the valve and start working that tread back into the rim, pinching it with both sides. And this takes a bit of maneuvering too, so you can flip it over. All right, not gonna lie, that was a bit tricky. So, work on a flat surface like this, like a table, that you're not afraid of scratching. Put this cord up, because you don't want to damage it right here. And slowly work one side of the tread back into the tire by putting your hands around it like this slowly making sure that this valve does not pop out. So I've done that. I've got one full side all the way back into the rim and it did require some convincing. Work it around like this. Don't worry about the other side popping out. Be careful when you flip it over because you don't want to damage this cord at all. So now this side's fully out. As you see the wet spots on a table, that is where I broke a sweat trying to get the rubber tread back in. I'm using this flower pot to put this, it's plastic, this cord in so that I don't damage it while it's resting on the table. So now see it's sitting on that flower pot. I'm gonna slowly work this side in, making sure that that other side does not pop out. Good, just working my way around here, slowly making sure that that other side is not popping out. Once in a while I might Kind of move this around a little bit to recenter it. So there we go, we got it fully in. If you have any tips for me on how to do this easier, this was the diff most difficult tire I've ever changed. I've changed about 30 bike tires, but this is also the smallest bike tire I've ever changed. So I appreciate any tips that you have because that was really difficult and I scoured YouTube for tips and could not find any good ones, but it took a lot of working the tire around and then we were able to do it. Okay, so we fixed this back flat tire and unfortunately my video recording device died, so I'm re using something new and getting some better audio here. And um, so to tighten these brakes here, all I'm gonna do is simply loosen up this with the hex key. So see here, this cable got a little stretched out and which made the brakes a bit looser. So I'm just gonna pull it through. So you definitely need some hex keys. I put these in the links and then tighten it. I'm gonna test the wheel to make sure it's not rubbing. So it's not rubbing and The brakes are catching pretty well there. So I'm gonna really tighten this down so that the, so it doesn't slip back through. And then I'm gonna do the same to the front to tighten the brakes here. So the final issue we had to figure out was the power cuts with this e-bike. And after we tested it a couple more times, it actually completely stopped working. So we got out the digital multimeter and if you're repairing any type of e-bikes, you definitely want one of these so you can test the electrical components. So what we did was tested the battery to make sure that was getting a full charge. 
uh, the motor and then we determined that the problem was the throttle of the e-bike could not fix it worked on it for quite a while watched tons of tutorials so it uh, didn't work we ended up just buying a new one from monster scooter parts a new uh, throttle and what we're going to do today is connect this throttle because i've already tested it out and e-bike e works perfectly and so today we're going to solder these wires onto the existing wires of the throttle on the e-bike okay so the first thing we're going to do is slide this throttle on here and figure out exactly what length we need to cut these wires at. I'm going to undo this a bit more. And this will be our first time soldering. And so you can learn along with us if you've never done it. Just got this kit online. It just arrived. So we're going to connect these wires to these wires with soldering. Okay, so to get soldering, we first got this soldering kit from Amazon here, which includes some heat shrink, actual soldering pen here. Um, I bought this separately, the rosin paste flux, which is something that a lot of people use when they're soldering. Uh, this one comes with some solder already, this kit. And um, I put use my bike stand here. This is the bike stand and put a piece of metal under it so that when I'm soldering, none of the solder drips onto the plastic. And then I got this, it's called the Helping Hands. And this holds your wires for you to make soldering much easier. Without that, it could be very tricky to do. Uh, also make sure that you're wearing safety glasses and doing your soldering in a well-ventilated area. So not indoors, but near fans or outside. And um, with that, we're gonna get started. To make strip this wire to make each of the wires a little longer, So I got my basic wire strippers here, going around, not pressing too tight. I separate the wires here, and then I'm going to strip each one the same amount about an inch or so. So there we go, I got the blue one stripped about an inch. And I made sure, you know, that this is fully disconnected from the e-bike. Got the red one. So there's no power running to these and I, you know, because I don't want to get zapped. There's the yellow one. See, we got each one stripped about an inch. So first thing I'm going to do is use the helping hands here and clamp the wire in that I'm soldering. And again, make sure these are all disconnected from your e-bike. So I'm going to slip on the heat shrink tube and this is the smallest one that I can fit over these wires here. Any smaller and I couldn't quite get it over the wire. So I'm going to use the method where I twist the two ends of the wires together, making sure it ends up in a pretty smooth surface. No wire sticking out, moving all the other wires out of the way. Got my wet sponge here, as you can see. Now make sure you have your safety glasses on. And then I'm going to use this rosin flux paste. Just put a tiny of it bit of it over the wires here. This is going to help it take on the solder a little bit better or heat up the wires all at once. Alright, so I've got my solder pen all heated up here. It's 
this. So I'm going to touch my soldering pen, which is, I'm going to put it to the sponge first, put a tiny bit of solder on it. Then I'm going to touch it to the bottom of the wires to heat them up. Then I'm going to slowly do the solder from the top. Heating from the bottom and soldering from the top. So you can see it coating the wire now. So it's all silver in the strands. And there we go. Now those two wires are connected together and I'm going to definitely let that cool a bit before we put on the heat shrink. So I got the heat wrapped secure. Now we're moving on to the next wire. Let's do the black one. making sure we're moving all the other cords completely out of the way. Don't want them to become accidentally touched. Putting a tiny bit of solder at the end of this, heating up the wire. And soldering from the top. Good, got enough on that one. Letting it cool before we hit, put the heat shrink on. That one's complete, got two done, three to go. Yellow's up next, put the heat shrink on. And again, just using a heat shrink that's just will just barely fit. There we go. Got about an inch of each of the wires. Now if you have any tips for me on soldering technique, wire connection, you know, feel free to let me know. This is my first time soldering. So far seemingly so good. Seemingly good. Moving all the other wires out of the way. Touching the damp sponge. Getting a little tiny bit of solder on the end of the tip here. Touching the damp sponge. Going from underneath for a second. And now going from the top. So we've got the wires twisted together here and applying the solder and you know that's basically it. Make sure you don't put too little amount of solder on there so that it's not coating the wires but you don't want so much solder on there that you can't see the strands of the the shape of the strands of the wire anymore. You don't want to glob it on there in big chunks. So um, but if you got any tips from me 
you know, make sure to leave a comment in the, in the section below. Another thing that you can use in your soldering is some silicone that would be applied underneath the heat shrink and this can provide an extra layer of waterproofing. I didn't use it, um, but I'm also going to cover these wires with electrical tape and then with the cord organizer that is supplied uh, on the EB5. So that's a good start when it comes to soldering. And if you have any questions or comments or would like to see any additional videos, let me know in the comments. And uh, make sure to check out our next video in this folding e-bike series, which is testing out the Swagtron Swag Cycle EB5 that we are repairing in today's video. All right, have a good one.